boy, here's another one of those charts. But as a tool, this one is the key for heat treating the steel that it describes. While the iron iron carbide phase diagram told us what phases different carbon levels gave us at different temperatures, this diagram adds the critical factor of time to what happens in the specific chemistry of our steel. It is often called an isothermal transformation diagram, but I prefer its other name, which describes it so well, the TTT diagram for our steel. TTT stands for time, temperature, and transformation. And what this chart does is tells us what phases we will get in our steel at any given temperature when we cool it from the austenitizing temperature. In other words, the time it takes for a transformation at a given temperature. Like the other diagram, along the left hand side is a column showing the temperature. But since the carbon content and chemistry is known and set specifically to this chart, instead of carbon or chemistry along the bottom, there is time in seconds. But there is something noteworthy about that time scale. It is logarithmic rather than linear in order to fit it all onto this chart. You see, to cover all the transformation rates, it starts in fractions of a second and ends in days. This diagram was originally created by cooling austenitized samples of steel to a given temperature and recording the phases that were formed at that temperature. When put all together, this gives us a distinct picture of what you get with this steel as you cool it and how much time is required for it to happen. The first and obvious zone on the diagram shows us when the steel is fully austenitic. And now you are probably wondering why this zone includes so much area below the normal A1 temperature. After all, isn't austenite only supposed to occur above that temperature? Well, if you are thinking that, then good catch, because that is actually the key to hardening steel. Remember that all of these changes are the result of diffusion. There's that word again. And that diffusion takes time. Uh-huh. The next part of the diagram is a curve that shows the other phases that will form from the austenite as it cools when given time for diffusion. At first there will be a mixture of austenite and these new phases, but with enough time they will entirely replace the austenite. The critical spot here is this narrow space between the left hand side of the chart and that pronounced part of the curve. This shows us where perlite formation is the fastest. Any perlite that is allowed to form here will be material that is soft and unhardenable, regardless of how fast it cools below this point. When we lamellar anneal, we intentionally pass as slowly through this temperature in order to allow complete transformation to perlite. This is what we do when we want soft steel, but if we want hard steel, we want to do the opposite. By cooling fast enough to outpace diffusion, we can trap the carbon in the austenite solution and create a very different situation where the cooling steel is still austenitic, well below the A1 temperature. So the key to hardening our steel is to simply cool at a rate fast enough to keep any perlite from forming. Now, below this point, you will notice that the austenite zone gets a little more breathing room as the times for other transformations become longer. Remember, diffusion is driven by temperature. The less temperature, the slower things happen. Well, until something other than diffusion takes over. Then things can happen very fast and in a whole new way. At the bottom, of the diagram is this line labeled M sub S. This stands for Martensite Start, and it is the most fascinating thing in the world for somebody who wants to make a knife. You see, austenite is not stable below A1. Those face-centered cubic stacked atoms, they really need to go back to something body-centered. But there is a problem. There are carbon atoms trapped between the iron atoms, keeping them from returning to body-centered cubic. So as the cooling continues, strain energy builds until the crystalline lattice can take no more. And then it happens. 
in a fraction of a second, a microscopic shock wave moves across whole planes of atoms near the speed of sound, distorting them into a whole new body-centered stacking. But rather than cubic, it is body-centered tetragonal to accommodate that trapped carbon. This new phase is martensite. Since carbon atoms do not diffuse to make martensite, time no longer holds control over the transformation. Only the rate of cooling driving the strain matters, and that is why the martensite zone is a flat line across the diagram, with degrees of martensite formed as it cools. But this can only happen to austenite that is not transformed into anything else, like perlite. This is why the key to hardening is to avoid that perlite.